الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي سخر لكم ما في السماوات والأرض وأصبح عليكم نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة له الملك وله الحمد وهو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو على كل شيء قدير أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله له ملك السماوات والأرض إليه ترجع العمور وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه بعدد أمواج البحور أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله يا إخواني عليكم بإصلاح السريرة حتى تصيروا خيرا من من العالانية قال الله تعالى وذروا الظاهر الإثم وباطنه إن الذين يكسبون الإثم سيجزون بما كانوا يقترفون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله مجل سريرة خير من العلانية وجل علانية صالحة فعلموا أن السريرة موضع النظر الحق والعلانية مطمح النظر الخلق وأن الظاهر أبدا يكون تابعا للباطن صلاحا وفسادا وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن في الجسد مضغة إذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب The khutbah mentions in this, this section or this paragraph or this, that everything has an outward aspect and an inward aspect and the Quran refers to zahir and wabatin and outward and inward aspects of things in particular he mentions blessings and he mentions blessings as being outward blessings and inward blessings and an example of this is uh, hunger which outwardly may appear to be a tribulation I'm hungry, I'm in pain but inwardly it's a great, it's described as a blessing, why? because through hunger you start to realize the blessing of food and also you start to get a connection with people who are hungry and the only way you can feel what people feel like when they're hungry is by being hungry yourself so here hunger is, both, is a blessing but you have to understand the inner aspect of it and the outer aspect of it wealth likewise is both a blessing and a tribulation inwardly and outwardly an example being that once you get lots of wealth outwardly you have lots of luxury but inwardly it becomes a test because every single thing that you're, you're given in life you will be asked about the more you're given the more you're going to be asked about therefore the Quran refers to blessings, as we said, He pours on you blessings outwardly and inwardly. This is what's referred to. What we understand with commentators on this is that the outward form of a blessing is that which is to do with the outward world, the dunya. You have a big car, this is an outward blessing. You have lots of children, it's an outward blessing, because these are worldly things. But when it describes an inward blessing, it's to do with the garden. That's why Ibn Abbas, he says, Zahiratul Islam ma hasan min khulqik wal batina ma tastar alayka min sayyi amalik. He said that what's meant by a good uh, outward bless, an inward blessing is the good character that you have. So if you're given good character, this is itself an inward blessing. And an outward blessing is the fact that your bad character isn't made public. If you think about it, every time, every time you had a bad thought, if you thought every time you had a bad thought your nose got bigger, or your ears got bigger, or you gave off a smell, what would you look like? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has outwardly protected you from having your inward shown to other people. Because if you thought about every time you had a, a bad thought, you started to give off a smell, it would be unpleasant on the trains and this is a blessing that Allah has given to humankind inward and outward so when we, we see this concept of inward and outward this is what it's referring to but likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says he says you should also avoid sin mistakes outwardly and inwardly so here he's talking about you as being an inward being and an outward being and that mistakes, faults, 
can be outward faults, which we know about, and inward faults, which we don't know about, or other people don't know about, which links back to the thing about Allah being protecting, a satir. What is meant by this, a zahir, the outward, is those things which are done with the limbs. Things that you do with your physical body. But batin, when it says, whether zahir al-ithm wa batinuhu, the batin, the inward things, are the things to do with your heart. And here, it shows that Islam isn't just about outward aspects, but rather it's talking about the heart, about what people can't see. That's why the, you, 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 some of the scholars have says, this verse, it actually refers to zina, adultery, fornication. Avoid this. Is that which leads up to it. Because before adultery takes place, things go on in people's heads, in people's hearts. Therefore, you need to avoid, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in another verse, He says, La taqrabu zina. Do not even come close. Why? Zahirun wa batinan. You need to not just think about, oh, I'm not going to drink. No, I'm Muslim, I don't drink. You should avoid the things that are going to lead you towards that situation. And for many of us who have come from situations which we, re we regret in our lives. Likewise, if you've made toba from something, you need to avoid zahiran, not go back to it, but batinan, meaning you need to avoid the roads that take you down that path. So if you know people who remind you of the good old days, which are really the bad old days, zahiran wa batinan, you need to avoid those people unless they've also joined you on the path of Toba. And this is an important lesson about what's meant by inward relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and outward relationship. Because he talks, uh, Allah subhanahu, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a dua which we should all learn, if we don't know the words of it, we should at least learn the concept. He says, Allah maj'al sarirati khayrun min al-a'laniyya, min a'laniyyati. Waj'al a'laniyyati saliha. Make my, uh, my inner secret literally, my inner being, make this better than my outward form. And we alhamdulillah today is Jum'ah and those that have taken some care to make sure their beards are looking good, making sure the perfume is not the cheap stuff, you know, making sure that our clothes are a little bit tidier, or these are the outward forms of coming to the Jum'ah. But what was the inward form? Did we really come expecting that the khutbah is going to change our lives? If you didn't come with that inward feeling, you're not going to have your life changed, no matter how good the Imam is, or how bad the Imam is. But if you come with that, you will get something. So you need to think about outward preparation and inward preparation. Wudu isn't just about washing the limbs. It's about putting your mind in the right frame to be able to receive the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prayer. So that's why he says, Allah majal sarirati khayran min alaniyati. Make this thing inside me better than the thing that's outward. But also make my outward form righteous. I don't just want to look, I don't want to be good inside, but act badly. I want to be good inside, but I also want to be righteous on the outside. I want to be in tune with what Allah tells me. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uses, when he talks about these two words, a sarira inward, wa outward, he always uses a sir or sarira, Awwal and first. He says, Allah knows what you hide and what you make public. He doesn't say what makes you make public and what you hide. He always talks about what you hide before what you make public. Why is this? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks to your hearts. He's, the, 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 the khutbah says, فَعَلُمْ أَنَّ سَرِيرَةُ مَوْدِعَ النَّظْرِ الْحَقِّ He says that the sarira, the inner being, what, make, what goes on inside you is where Allah really looks. That's what he's looking at. He's not looking at the outward form. That's why in a hadith the Prophet says, He doesn't look at your outward form or your bodies. He looks at your inner being and your, in, your heart and your intention. And that's why when you go for Hajj, you slaughter, you do all the actions, you slaughter a sheep. Does he need sheep? How many sheep does Allah need? He says, <laughs> the, the blood 
and the meat does not reach him. But what reaches him is your righteousness. And therefore, take care of what goes on inside. And not only what goes on on the outside. Why? Because the outward form is where people look. And this is what we take care about. We look at people and think, Oh, mashallah, he's got a big beard. Mashallah, he knows the sunnah. Mashallah, look at her dress, she's Islamic. This is what people look at. Likewise, they look, oh, look at her. She, she's got a few hairs showing. Look at him. His trousers are too long. According to the hadith, he's going to Jahannam. Who's making these judgments? She's going to Jahannam because her hair is showing. He's going to Jah These are the things that people do. So you should be focusing on what Allah wants, which is the inward being, your heart. Not worrying about what people think of you. But thinking about what Allah wants of you, what He thinks of you, because He knows what's going on. If you focus on that, you will be fine. Why? Because Allah, Allah doesn't look at the outward form, He looks at your hearts. So we should focus on this. We should put effort into this. But likewise, we shouldn't pretend that you can be inward. Oh, I'm a good Muslim, even though I drink. No. Look at what he says, inward and outward means outwardly you can only find the inward being by following what the Prophet ﷺ talked about. And especially now as Rabi al-Awwal comes in, this is an interesting time for people. Because Rabi al-Awwal, the month in which the Prophet ﷺ was born, the month in which he died, the month in which he made his hijrah, this is an important, significant historic month. People use it to argue about whether you should be celebrating the birth of the Prophet some for, some against, but they miss the point. Both groups miss the point. Because if you want to know who the Prophet was, and this is a good month to spend the time learning it, you need to know what the purpose of this is. It's not about celebrating. It's about knowing who he is. But how do you know who he is? You have to know who his character was. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he talked about inward and outward, he says, Allah ma ahsin khulaqi kama ahsan ta khulaqi. He says, Oh Allah, perfect my inner character like you perfected my outward form. So here, even knowing him is to do with knowing the outer form, but more importantly, what the inner character of the Prophet ﷺ was. But you can't do one without the other. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell, tells the Prophet ﷺ, He says, Kul innama ana bashra mithlukum. He says, I am but a man like you. So the first step towards understanding who the Prophet ﷺ is, is to understand what kind of man he was. You should know what kind of beard he had. You should know what kind of clothes he wore. You should know that he does like nice perfume. These are all the things you spent your time on. You know that he was a man. Likewise, he was a husband. You should know what kind of husband. He was a father. What kind of father? You need to know what his basharia was like so that you can be like him. But that's not the only thing. But there's a difference. But the difference is that I, the Prophet say, is told to say, I received revelation. And what's this revelation? That there is only one God. And this is the essence of the Qur'an. And the essence of the Qur'an is in the Prophet Wasallam's character. When, he was, when he, they were asked, what was he like? Sayyidatina Aisha replied, Kana khulquhu al-Qur'an. His character was that of the Qur'an. So the Qur'an isn't a book to be read. It's a book to be lived inside you. Inside you. Therefore, whoever understands this and hopes to meet his Lord, understanding this, he should do good actions, but listen carefully, he should not ascribe partners. And we don't ascribe partners. When we pray, there's no statues here, is there? Or is there? Are there things going on in your mind where we do associate partners? He's looking at me. Maybe I should make my sajjah a bit longer. Oh, but what if, I don't, if I'm not praying on the front row? These are things where we're thinking about people. This salah 
This every action that we do should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where niyat, intention and hearts come. And this is what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts pure and our hearts pure for Him only. And that we don't only focus on our outward and we don't judge people by their outward and think, oh, he's a good Muslim, she's a good Muslim. No, be careful because this is shirk. This, when you think you are the one to decide who goes to hell and who goes to fire, the, the hellfire, this is Allah's job. And you're now thinking you're taking it on and that's what many of the Muslims do. Oh, he prays in the wrong mosque, his trousers are too long, her scarf is the wrong colour. We need to protect ourselves from this by remembering what's being said in these verses. And we ask Allah to give us this opportunity and also to forgive us for any mistakes we've made. Wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru li wa lakum wa sa'iril muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Allahumma ta rabbil ayna ta khalaqti wa ma'ana ahli wa 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 ahli الحمد لله الذي جعل اليوم الجمعة أفضل أيام الأسبوع واختصه بساعة ساعة الدعاء فيها مجاب مسموع أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا بربوبيته وإرغاما لمن جحد وكفر وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الجن والبشر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه مصابيح الغرر يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون واعلموا أن الله الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه فقال تعالى ولم يزل ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته الملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارضى اللهم عن خليفة نبيك على التحقيق أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وعن الإمام الأواب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وعن ذي النورين والبرهان أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وعن ليث ابن غالب إمام المشارك والمغارب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي ابن أبي طالب وارض اللهم عن الستة الباقين من العشرة وعن حمزة والعباس والحسن والحسين وأمهما فاطمة الزهرة وعن أزواج نبيك النبيك المطهرات وعن بقية الصحابة والتابعين وتابعي تابعين ومن تبعهم إلى يوم الدين الله من سر جيوش المسلمين وأسارك الموحدين وعلى الكفرة والمشركين وعلى الكلمة إلى يوم الدين الله مغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات وقاضي الحاجات ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان ويتايذ الكرباء وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يأذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم واسألوه من فضله يؤتيكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة